Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Pod Scum, where we get down in the deepest, darkest, murkiest of waters. I'm coming to you from the Blue Lagoon. I am your bastard of ceremonies, number one scumbag, Rex Triple X Ruger, a.k.a. Diamond David Lee Roth. That's right. I am the son of glam, the front man for the band. Just smoked a few grams, got a million fans, always going out with a bang. Shazam! Wop, bop, loo, bop, wop, bang, bang, ha! Damn! Woo! I'm feeling good. The man with the golden voice and the silk tongue. <laughs> That's right, the hair metal high priest. King of sleaze. And I have a good interview for you today. So good, so legendary, that I'm not even going to pump my, my bands. I am going to let you see the behind-the-scenes process of me heavy-handedly inviting him because this is the podcast that has no frills. No, well, I don't want to say no thrills because I am the thrill. I'm the thrill. No glitzy little intro song. None of that hoopla. You don't need the frills because you got the Diamond David thrills. Whew. Brought to you, as always, by... Gives you the locks that rock. Let me give myself a look. Oh, mm, good Lord. Boy, this guy's going to be depressed. Mm, let me get a drink and wet the palate here. Mm. Wet my lips so I can give this guy a big fat kiss from Sleaze Heaven. Yeah. I got you guys a legend tonight. And I know, I know. You're going to say, Rex, you're always guilty of throwing around that word legend. Well, I've said it before, and I'll say it again with emphasis, with my Sharpie. That's all I deal with. That's all I deal with. Legends. This guy's so legendary, I need a second look. Hmm. Look at those luscious locks. God damn. No wonder I'm fronting so many bands and have to be the hardest working man in show business. I mean... I am, as you all know, I am up and down the eastern seaboard. Rocking and rolling for all to see and inviting guests for all to see and hear. And here we are. So, and I'm not going to say a demeaning thing about the, the lateness of rock stars. Technically, we're scheduled for 7 p.m. Eastern, and it is that right now. So, you know, but... Hands down, I would give this guy a free pass because, in my mind, he is the stuff of legend and has rubbed elbows with the stuff of legend. And that's what uh, that's what really counts. And you know what? Good news for him because he's about to rub elbows with another one. Mm. Let me give you guys a little entertainment then, right? Give you your money's worth while we're waiting for Mr. Rockstar. What do you want to hear tonight, folks? What can I get you from the uh, repertoire? Ain't talking about love. Our love is riding to the core. Ain't talking about love. All right, cut. There he is. <laughs> Enough already, right? Jesus. Mm. All right. Where is this fine gentleman here? And a fine gentleman he is. Where is he? Where is he? We'll get him here. We'll get him. Where's the mic thing? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Just can't see you. Yep. Oh, oh got to hit the video thing, too. There new, he is. New, new, new to this one. Hello to you, sir. Um, hi. How are you doing? How do you like this rock star hair? Hey, looks better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> For my pod scum audience out there, this is the great Kelly Garney. Uh, the pioneer, the one of the founders of legendary, and and I and I don't just throw that word around loosely. Legendary metal band, Quiet Riot. Now, Jesus, having you on here is so exciting, and I just got so much stuff that I want to ask you. As a founding member of Quiet Riot, uh, playing on those first two albums, do you remember where and when you were when you when it first dawned on you the genius of Randy Rhodes? Because obviously he's he uh, you know he's one of your you know, was one of your, you know, childhood friends. When did you first say this guy's a musical genius? Oh, uh, geez. Uh, well, you know, 
I get asked that question a million times and and definitely uh, in different ways, but uh, you know, I have a real good answer for it. Um, I kind of have a much different perspective of Randy's genius than okay. most people. I grew up with it. Right, right. And we were so tight and so insulated with what we were doing. You know, yes, we saw other players, and yes, I, you know, we we played with other players. But uh, right. you know, the only thing I ever really noticed was, well, my guy is better than those guys. Right, 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 right. And now so, when he goes off, and now when he eventually goes off and plays with Ozzy and, and, and produces some of the most fantastic guitar playing, you know, masterpieces like blizzards of Oz. Um, uh, are you still watching his career and, and, and still, you know, uh, inspired to watch him play where you, did you always keep an eye on him even when you weren't working together anymore? No, not at all. Um, with the exception of, you know, contacting each other as friends. Right. Um, and he would tell me about his life, and I'd go, oh, yeah, okay, I get it. Right. But, um, you know, again, it just, uh, I saw him more as a friend. Right. Even though I played and play, I played with him for nine years. Right. And uh, so I saw the friend first. I didn't see the player. Right. Other people, they first they hear him, you know, or maybe they were lucky enough to see him, you know. Right. And I, Oh, look at that guy, you know? Right. I grew up with that. So, you know, um, it just, I saw him develop from not even knowing how to play lead. Right. To, you know, all through the, the two Quiet Riot albums uh, that we did together. And um, so to me, it, it progressed. Well, as I always say, you know, Randy, Randy didn't get better, you know, every every month or two or something you know he got better you know every five minutes right right and, um, sometimes it only took a minute <laughs> so yeah. um i was used to it because right. his his and my playing in the very beginnings were so intermingled right that you guys were in sync yeah yeah it just was, I wasn't sitting there going, oh, my God, look at this right. guy. You know, right. To me, it was a whole different thing. It's like, okay, now you want me to play what? Right. You know, I, I was just learning myself. And there certainly was a harmony in between you guys playing. And I think just the harmony in life in general. Now, when you write Angels with Dirty Faces, that really seems to be a, a, a thorough, comprehensive story of a real friendship right there. Almost like a love letter to Randy Rhodes, almost. Yeah, you could say that. You know, of course, I loved him. He was he was my brother. You know? Yeah. Uh, I have a brother. We we don't talk very much. We have yeah. had lately, sadly. But um, yeah, Randy was like my brother. Yeah, yeah. So so, um, you just recently, well, I, you know, earlier this year, you got up on stage and played with the current lineup of Quiet yeah. Riot. You know, uh, 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 what was the impetus for doing that? Uh, you know, was that pre-planned? Was that spontaneous? Did you get together with those guys and say, I, I want to get back out and play with you guys? Um, the idea and concept of it, if you want to even call it that, uh, actually came up several years ago uh, between me and Frankie Benelli. Okay, rest in peace. Great Frankie and, Benelli. Um, yeah. So, you know, uh, prior to that, uh, those conversations, I had lived pretty far away, and um, you know they they never played anywhere near where I was. I was right. in a very remote place, right? And it wasn't prison either, believe it or not. But um, <laughs> I just lived way up in the mountains and had yeah. you know kind of a different. Excluded. sure, sure. Why not? And um, so. Uh, once I, I ended up moving to Phoenix briefly for a year and then uh, moved to Boulder City, which is where I originally came from. Um, and uh, when I was in Phoenix, me and Frankie were talking and uh, he said, uh, he said, you know, it'd be cool is if you came up on stage because I told him a story. I said, you know, we we're talking. I, I said, you know, Slick Black Cadillac is about my dad yeah yeah 
He goes, really? And he couldn't believe it. He, he, he didn't know that. And I said, yeah, it's about my dad. I said, I don't have a songwriting credit on the song. Right. You know, thanks to, to Kevin and his uh, his ways back then. But um, that's okay. You know, it's actually about my dad. And I told him that. He said, oh, he goes, you know, it'd be really cool if you came up and did that with us. And I said, yeah. well, I'm in Phoenix now. Next time you guys come to Phoenix, um, there. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it. And uh, he, he was like, cool, great. Well, they, it never happened in Phoenix. Um, they just didn't come through for like a whole year for whatever reason, probably due to Frankie's illness. I think, yeah. At that point, he started getting kind of ill. So, um, you know, from there, you know, once Frankie passed, you know, he had previously made it known to the band members, he really wanted, he thought it would be a good thing for the band, which I, I think it probably was, to, to you, carry know, on. They had, you know, the, yeah. the, the OG of OGs there. Yep. Yep. Who's yep. still around. Yeah. And, yeah. And um, the one that's still around. Yeah. So uh, that's where the whole idea came from to do it. it. It basically got passed on as did the name and the rest of the band. And, uh, so, you know, when it came time to do the New Year's thing, about uh, about a month before, I got uh, a message from Alex and asking me if I wanted to do it. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I love seeing Rudy amazing. in there, too. I love seeing Rudy back in there, too. I think that gives it a nice pedigree, too, you know, seeing him back in the band. That's that's kind of why I did it. A lot of it was yeah. because Rudy was there. Yeah. You know, okay, I, now I had no Frankie. I, I, you know, I had John Kelly, who's a very nice guy, by the way, and great to play with. Yep. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, seeing seeing Rudy would be really good for me, and I knew we'd have plenty of time, which is something Rudy and I have never had. Yeah. To sit down and have a great talk, and we had plenty of time, and we had a fantastic That's awesome. conversation. Right on, right on. I love hearing that. So, so uh, to take me back to that comment you had just made mention of the song "Slick Black Cadillac." Uh, well, what's the metaphor there when you say it's about my father? Did he drive one? Was that his nickname? Like, what's the meaning behind that? For those of the, the, who don't know, it, it, it's really a pretty basic story. Yeah, my my dad was not only a driver of Cadillacs but a yeah. collector of Cadillacs. Okay, and, and Randy and me had kind of grown up in the back of those Cadillacs. Um, I even stole one once, but Randy was <laughs> that one. But um, I was like 13 and I didn't know how to drive. Um, so I got in some trouble. Yeah. But I didn't wreck it. But uh, when um, when it came time to, to get a ride somewhere or something, yeah, you, know, you, you rode in a, in a convertible Cadillac in the back There's seat. There's a lot worse ways to ride, that's for sure. I mean, nothing wrong with being in the back of a caddy. So um, we, were writing, uh, we were writing songs, you know, and yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so Randy was talking about the Cadillacs, and he, and he said, he said we should write a song about some guy that drives Cadillacs because Cadillacs are cool. Yeah. And Kevin says, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll write a song about a badass, and he's like a rebel, and and yeah. that's where it came from. And 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 the massive song it became, yeah, pretty incredible. So, um, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but a lot of people have have seen it. Uh, the Quiet Riot documentary when Frankie kind of decided to move forward and and, and kind of put Kevin passing away behind him and and do the resurgence of Quiet Riot. It was documented, turned into a film. Um, what did you think when Quiet Riot was going through those years? You know, what I mean, and a revolving door of not a revolving door, but a few different singers came through. Uh, did you like Frankie's idea to go on with the band? Uh, I had no objections to it at all because uh, the players at the time, and um, you know they 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 had a lot of time invested in it. Certainly more than yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. And um, or Randy for that matter. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so and consistently sometimes more than Kevin. But um, no, I had no problems with with them carrying it on at all. Now, when you look back to the early days of Quiet Riot, now, obviously, it's been well publicized and well documented. You and Kevin Dubrow, you know, did, uh, did butt heads. Were you guys ever able to uh, ever get to a point before he passed away of reconciliation, for those that don't know the story out there? Uh, well, yeah, we we 
he moved to Las Vegas where I lived. He moved just a few blocks away from me. We had already uh, kissed and made up, you know. I think and, the Rock fans like to hear that because obviously we love all you guys, you know. Yeah. Now we he became like a brother to me. He, you know, in in every every aspect of the word, he actually replaced Randy in that because Kevin was the person I had felt I had the most kinship with. And yeah. gratuitous commercial coming up. Can we interrupt this break? <laughs> tell yep. you about yep. this great book written by angels Kelly and Gardner dirty faces the question he just asked, asked me. yeah yep 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 it is and and it is a very lo lovely it's love letter to your Amazon or through me personally yep yep and it is a lovely mm -hmm. testament uh, to your friendship it with Rennie Rhodes now do you have a new book in the works as well yeah I just uh it's it's just like week a week or two away it's like printing time away uh, okay a proof copy here okay naked vegas okay yeah beautiful beautiful and uh, and, and yeah. is, is this a departure from a biography style is, is this a fiction story well it's sort of a biography yeah it's definitely okay. a biography it's a story to be sure uh but it it, it doesn't really have any well it has some <laughs> with me. that's definitely pod scum audience approved right there we like to see that yeah. So, 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 is this a book of your? Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, you're very in, involved in photography. Is, is this then a, a a book of your photography? That's exactly what it was. Is you, yeah, I I was a photographer here in Vegas for 20 years, and I primarily did nudes. Okay. Uh, and then because of the very lucrative escort services and the need yep. for uh, models up here, my my business was you know primarily women although i've done photo shoots of every kind i've done them out of helicopters i've you know done all kinds of stuff with photography bungee jumping um yep. you name it um so i uh, in that 20 years i had a lot of adventures and and the book you know is, is called naked vegas but it says the it. highs and lows of a photographer's journey i love it i love it i love it so and I encourage people to go out and get that because it looks like there's some beautiful photography in there. And come on, people, who doesn't love nudes? I mean, come on, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's over over 250 pictures in there. Now, if I could just go back for a minute, when you're first creating with Randy Rhodes, and he is such a creative force, what was the creative process like back then? Just sitting down and writing songs with Randy Rhodes, because I think a lot of people would be blown away by that. Did you guys give each other equal space? Did somebody take care of lyrics? Did someone take care of music? How did you guys share that between each other as two creative forces? Well, you know, um, that's an interesting question. I would, and nobody's ever really asked it of me. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of our songs that me and Randy wrote back yep. in the day were created during the learning process while mm -hmm. he was learning his leads. He, he did get to a point uh, where when he was about uh, 13, where he didn't need a teacher anymore. And his teacher had already thrown up his hands and said, I can't teach him anymore. So from there, it was all on randy to learn create yep and um you know play different things all the time yeah so he he would come up with things to play and then he you know i'd either be there or i'd go over there he lived around the corner from me and um and he'd play what what he wanted me to play something too and i'd go yep. okay and he'd say try this first and you know go a d g or something and um you know and see what you can build on that and and that's basically how we actually wrote a couple of the songs that ended yep. up on quiet riot one that were stuff me and randy had done prior to quiet quiet Riot. yep now now obviously uh three important people you know uh who have been in the public eye that have worked with you and uh and obviously randy rhodes frankie benali and kevin dubrow obviously you know three you know brothers in a sense uh to you that all that, that all unfortunately have passed away and and are no longer here with us um where were you uh, uh specifically uh when you find out like like randy rhodes obviously for instance one of your one of your dearest friends you know where are you and how does that affect you you know when you first find out that that randy has tragically passed away in the accident that he had well uh Sadly, we didn't have a chance to talk uh, 
prior to to, to this interview. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. We're still we're still going on through it just fine. I'm yeah. you know, I'm having a good time. Um, one one of the things I, I would have told you if we had a previous conversation, please, yeah, would have been that you know what I've been asked that question not a million times, more like ten million. Okay, okay. I just don't answer it anymore. Okay, so, fair enough. Fair sorry, enough. Like, answer. No, fair enough. I would want to put it behind. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's certainly not something that you want to dwell on and, and certainly be brought up a lot. And because he's he's such a person that was so in the public eye and passed away so tragically young, I'm sure, it, 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 and your friendship with him, I'm sure it has been asked of you countless times. Um, every, every, every tear I shed is in the book. Right, right, right. So um, uh, you yourself m musically, do you do anything creatively from a music standpoint or is it just photography these days and jumping up with Quiet Riot occasionally? Um, no more plans to go up with Quiet Riot and no, okay. no to them. I had a great time and they were fantastic to, to do that with, but I think it was a one trick pony thing. Yeah. And it got some good publicity. Um, and, uh, I really don't play anymore. I mean, I got a whole room full of bases here, but, right. um, I, Went out with my wife the other night. We went to a bar here in town. Some friends of mine were playing. Uh, they asked me to come up on stage. I said no, and they kept asking me. And finally, I gave in. And <laughs> it's the performer in you. You can yeah. resist. And luckily, yeah. it was like one. So there was like nobody left in this bar, which is yeah. great <laughs> because I'm out of practice. But um, and I don't know a lot of songs. People assume like, you know, here, hey, you know that docking tune, you know, the one. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. So, anyway, I don't even know. I don't listen. So, um, so this current, uh, so this current version of Quiet Riot that we have, that we have right now seems to be a very tight lineup right now. I love Jizzy singing for them. Uh, uh, what did you think specifically about the vocalists? Uh, they went through uh, a, a stint with Mark Ruff and then that Scott guy and then eventually Jizzy. Do you like Jizzy singing for the band? I do like Jizzy singing for the band. And, um, you know, I would be the first one to know and say, right. Kevin has some huge, huge shoes to fill. Agreed. Yeah. I think it's hard to, for anybody that has to do it. But having been on stage with Jizzy, having watched Jizzy, and I know Jizzy very well, I even photographed Jizzy when I was a photographer. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, he he does as good a job as anybody can do in that yeah. situation. And he's been a staple. He's been a staple of that scene for a long time too. And he's bounced he's around. He's got the, time too. He's so, got the miles in. He, yep, yep. He's got the street cred. So he's good. Um. Uh. When uh. When when uh when when uh you think of bands that go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, does Quiet Riot belong there? The, the Hall of Fame, which I've been there, um, which is nice. I have uh, no love loss for the decisions that they make, mind you. I'm not I'm not pro. I'm I'm probably more con them because I I feel like there's there's been a lot of X uh, left out of there that it's criminal that they should still be out of there. But uh, you know I I just believe with the music and the anthems and the and the mark that you guys made in that '80s metal scene that you guys have a place there. Well, um, I wasn't involved in the '80s, and so my answer is is twofold. Uh, you know, first of all, my answer is. Uh, sadly, a question for you, but uh, it'd be like, which Quiet Riot should be in the Hall of Fame? Secondly, yep. I would say, you know what? It, it just means enough to me that they put Randy in there. That's where he belongs because he was the band. He was yeah. everything. And deservedly yeah. so. I would like to see you guys all go up there collectively uh, and somebody represent the ones who have passed away, you know, obviously posthumously on their behalf. Like we've seen other acts who've gone in that have had, had members, you know, that are deceased. But I think anybody that's involved with the music along the timeline of the band's existence it certainly belongs up there. You know, I have no problem with uh, uh, you know, Cliff Burton just because he was only on the first or two, one or two Metallica records. You know, I mean, his father was still there on his behalf, and I think he still deserves to go in there. You know, as that, as that, I would think that you or any of the guys throughout the history of Quiet Riot certainly belong there. I mean, 
Nah, you know it's enough that Randy's there. He's uh he's a big, he's he's big enough to represent us all. Yeah. Now, do you think though? Uh, do you think sometimes though, like when you think of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, do you think sometimes though that there isn't enough of the genre of, of music that you guys played though in there? Do you think it's well represented enough? Um, you know, who's to say? You know, right, right. It's you know, I mean, there's so much controversy about that sort of thing, and yeah, yeah, there is a lot. Who gets in and all this and. I don't, um, I, I mean, I read it and I don't have an opinion one way or another, you know, I mean, this is like, you know, people arguing about who's the president it is or something, you know, is that these people are going to do what they want, you know? Right. Yeah. It's politics. A lot of it, unfortunately. Yeah. It's politics. Unfortunately, a lot of it is, you know, who's in there and who's not. Um, yeah, yeah, so what are your so what are your uh, future endeavors? Is any of your photography for sale? Is there anything you have a website or anything that you would like to, you know, invite viewers to come check out? I do have a website I'm getting ready to launch and it's all in conjunction with this book. Awesome. Okay. Um, Naked Vegas. Which is coming out with a new brand that I'm coming mm -hmm. up with. I'm going to be trendy and have my own brand. Nice. Um, <laughs> you deserve it. Why not? But anyways, the website is going to be uh ghost town art and vibes.com okay uh, that should be up in about two weeks books are available on there t-shirts with my way cool logo and um hats coffee cups all this you know the usual stuff sure and uh it's cool swag so you know get a book yeah, and, 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 and I also and I also invite people to go back and check out uh, Angels with Dirty Faces, which is really just a, just a testament to your love and friendship with Randy Rhodes. And, you know, very thorough, very comprehensive, you know, a very exhaustive book about you guys's friendship. But one that you can tell is definitely certainly a labor of love. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you so much for saying all that. That's very nice of you. And Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. I appreciate you joining me. And 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 I would be remiss if I didn't take this chance to have the great Kelly Garney in front of me to say, driving in a slick black Cadillac. Oh, no one wants to hear me sing. <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. People come here to see Rex Ruger perform. Uh, you're, you're right. You're right about that, Kelly. Kelly, I really appreciate the time, and you are a true gentleman, and in my mind, a legend, sir. So my hat's off to you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And it was, yes. I had a good time talking with you. Yes, yes. Hopefully we can do it again sometime and we will stay in touch. And I really appreciate it, sir. And uh, thank you from the fans for great music. Well, good luck to everything you do. And naked photography. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Okay, see ya. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. There you have it right there. There he is. The great Kelly Garney. An original, that's right, an O, it's not a G, an OG metal guy. That's right. That's the guy who started Quiet Riot with one guitar legend, Randall Randy Rhodes, who ultimately was taken from us way too young. And you can see that it's something that still continues to stay with him, talking about his dear friend. And, uh, um, but... As he said, he poured that all out in a book called Angels with Dirty Faces, a very comprehensive, thorough love letter about his friendship and with his friendship with the great Randy Rhodes. Of course, that's Kelly Garney of The Great Quiet Riot was on albums one and two, both put out in 1978. I think they only came out in Japan, though. Something weird. But then eventually, obviously, now we have access to everything. So, uh Slick Back Cadillac, though, did appear on one of those. Driving in a slick black Cadillac. It's got solid gold. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm going to go cool myself down, hose myself off, because the man is hot. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, you know, nice little short talk with a legend. He's got legend stuff to do, as do I. So get the hell out of here, everybody. Um, just like to let you guys know. And I'll be coming to you again very soon. You will get your fill of more pod scum with Rex Ruger. So for now, I'm signing off and telling you to take it easy and keep it sleazy.